Service dogs come in all shapes and sizes. There are several different types and tasks that they can do to help a disabled handler. Some larger dogs can help handlers with mobility, while smaller dogs can be suited for psychiatric and medical alert tasks there. Fox 10's Irene Snyder got an up-close look at what it takes to train a service dog. Dogs are cute, furry, lovable, best friends. But for some people, they're even more than that. They're lifelines. I couldn't imagine my life without him. I mean, he's helped me so much. Maria Kellerman's golden retriever, Bugsy, is a trained service dog. While she may look perfectly fine on the outside, Maria says she struggles with severe anxiety and depression. Bugsy is trained to perform tasks to help her in daily life. Good job! He's helped out significantly like that, and it's probably the most like consistent thing in my life. Put your head down. A service dog is legally considered medical equipment, albeit Good the most job. adorable medical equipment you'll ever see. Good boy. They're defined by the American Disabilities yeah. Act as dogs that have been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability. The right and then a left. The service dogs are, are unique to each individual and what they need, and we try to train those tasks that's going to best help them. But they have to start from the time that they're puppies to get the proper obedience, the proper manners. Dog Trainers at Arizona Dog Sports in Paradise Valley teach service dog classes. Okay, Miss Pizza. Before enrolling a pup in the program, they have to assess if he or she has what it takes to go all the way. Yes, there you go. The prospective service dogs get temperament tested. Very nice. To determine if they have the right temperament and personality to be a service dog. Okay. They start them off in basic puppy classes, puppy obedience classes, probably run them through all of the obedience classes up to the canine good citizen. One more. Working up through that advanced obedience training in the classroom takes at least six months. Good job. Service dogs also have to learn how to behave in public, which can be harder than in the classroom. They have to learn things like heel, come on, leave it, yes. Stay. We just see that the dogs can behave in public, that they're not frightened by someone pushing a cart or someone coming up from behind. And we show the people how to handle the dog if they're shopping, those, those types of things. Next cone. These dogs have to behave in all sorts of busy environments, including grocery stores, restaurants, and even amusement parks. Ramsey. Another skill, knowing when it's okay to visit with strangers and when to focus on your handler. Want to make sure they look at us. In this class, the future service dogs train alongside the future therapy dogs. When I ask you to go to the next cone, be sure your dog takes a look at you. The main difference between these two types of working dogs, service dogs help their disabled handlers, while therapy dogs are trained to comfort others in places like hospitals, nursing homes, and schools. Come on, guys! Lynn takes her class into the kids' park next door to practice. It's important that young kids learn how to, to treat and be with dogs, as well as the dogs need to learn how to do that. Lisa Benyon's dog Chance is in this class. He's training to be a therapy dog and will be comforting hospice patients. Yeah. Animals can be a distraction. They can, you know, he, they can be a, something for us to put our attention on. Buddy forward. While these therapy dogs take many of the same foundational classes as the service dogs, Walk to complete the program, service dogs need to also learn some tasks. One more. This is Pizza. Yes, good girl. She's trainer Debbie Nichols, personal service dog, and is an expert at opening and closing doors. Attach a tug so that when you hit the handle, open the door just a little bit, and then the dog can grab the tug in order to be able to open it. <laughs> good girl. Find it. Then there's scent training, where the dogs learn to associate a particular scent with an alert the for cheese. things like low blood sugar, heart rate, and even seizures. Like snow. Bugsy knows how to retrieve medicine. Yes. Yes. He also does deep pressure therapy. Come on. For this task, the service dog is taught to lie down on the handler's lap or chest, calming down the heart rate and helping with sensory overload. Good job. Once the dog is public oh access trained and oh, task trained, yeah. they take a service oh, dog test, okay. the final leg to completing this program. Close. There you go. Then they're off into the world. Let's go down to the end of this aisle, hang a lap. Just because they're fully trained doesn't mean there won't be some rough patches. And he's a dog that wants to please, but he's still very young um, and he has a lot of energy. We're going to go down the scary aisle. Right no here. dog. Yeah. Not even a service dog is perfect. But the bond between these handlers and their dogs is like no other. The way that we train them, they want to work. They want to come in and they want to do that for you. And as a trainer, watching them grow together and learn to help each other makes it all worth it. Because a lot of people with some of these issues can't get along on their own. 
but if they have their little furry companion, then it, it makes all the difference for them. It's very rewarding. I love it. Irene Snyder, Fox 10 News. Now, businesses are not legally allowed to ask for a service dog certificate. They can ask these two questions. Is this a service dog? And what tasks has this dog been trained to do? So that's what they're allowed to ask you. If you want to learn more about service dog training, we do have more info on our website, fox10phoenix.com.